Philip, you famously defend panpsychism as an explanation for consciousness. I think I know what panpsychism is, but I will know better when you articulate it for me. Panpsychism is the view that consciousness goes all the way down to the basic building blocks of reality. So the most basic physical entities, maybe fundamental particles like electrons and quarks, have incredibly simple forms of conscious experience. And the very complex conscious experience of the human or animal brain is somehow built up from these simpler forms of consciousness at the level of fundamental physics. So seems a bit weird, <laughs> but more and more philosophers and even some neuroscientists in the last 10 or 15 years have been taking this view more seriously. Yeah, that's absolutely the case. And I, I speak to many, uh, and I also speak to many who are absolutely dumbfounded by that. Because I've asked some, I said, how do you account for this? Uh, and they, they sort of have this baffled look on their face that they, they can't even criticize it because they're, <laughs> they're so, they're so uh, uh, overwhelmed by that. They can't imagine that their colleagues are thinking this way. So you're one of the ringleaders um, of, of causing this uh, disturbance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> how, I take all the blame. <laughs> what motivates it? Well, we've been trying for several decades now to explain consciousness in terms of purely physical processes in the brain. And that project, in my view, has gone precisely nowhere. Mm. Uh, which is not to say the science of consciousness has gone nowhere. I think that's a different question. But in terms of that hard problem, so-called, of explaining consciousness in terms of patterns of neural firings, I would say we've got nowhere with that. Moreover, I think there are good philosophical arguments that seem to show that it's, it's not really a coherent project. Now, what the panpsychist does is turn that on its head. So rather than starting with physical stuff and trying to get consciousness out of that, we instead start with consciousness and try and account for the emergence of physical reality in terms of some underlying story about consciousness. And I would argue that in contrast to the abysmal failure of the physicalist research program, we've actually worked out how to do that. We've actually made sense of how physical reality could emerge from some more fundamental story about consciousness. So really, I think you've just got to contrast two explanatory projects. One, trying to get consciousness out of matter. The other, trying to get out of matter out of consciousness. <laughs> and I think the latter's actually gone much better than the former, surprisingly. Well, regarding the former, um, as you know, I've done this uh, exhaustive search of theories, uh, uh, landscape of consciousness, yeah. and um, of the more than 200 theories, about 100 of them are materialistic, physicalist kinds of theories in different categories, neurobiological, computational, phylogenetic, uh, electromagnetic, you know, no sense going through the categories. Um, but what seems to have happened as I've tracked the field uh, for the last 50, 60 years, um, since I was a neurophysiologist and a doctoral student, um, it, the number of physical theories has gotten greater. The more we know, the more physicalist theories you have. That's the opposite of what science should be. The more you know, the, the fewer theories you should have. And it's gone the opposite way. Yeah, I think that's right. 25 years ago, the neuroscientist Christoph Koch bet the philosopher David Chalmers yeah. that it would be all wrapped up by now. We'd yeah. have identified the theory and everyone would agree yeah, on it. Right. And the summer just gone, actually. He publicly conceded defeat on that yeah. bet. It was very, very noble of him. Yeah, there is, there is no consensus. There are many different theories. Um, w with really n no agreement on, on which is the correct one. But I think also what people have come to see is that we really need to take more seriously the philosophical underpinnings of the problem of consciousness. It's not a purely scientific question. The science is absolutely crucial, but I think we need both scientists and philosophers working together to make progress on consciousness. And I think as people come to see that, that's made us take seriously certain options, which at first seemed a bit bizarre. But when we realize the philosophical depths of the issue, I think that gives us motivation to 
look a bit wider, I think.